discuss um, the state's offer. Okay. Thank you. Let me see, do we have the- Your Jane? Honor. Oh, Your Honor, uh, for 12 and 13, I need, uh, I need to have a breakout room with my Spanish interpreter to interview Mr. Lugo Zhuang. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank Good you. Good afternoon, you're right here whenever you need me. All right, Ms. Lin, thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other special requests, Ms. Falk? Would you like a certain kind of music being chimed in during the process? No? Okay. <laughs> no, Your Honor, I believe we're fine. Um, I am doing handling the two add-on cases. Understood, thank you. And I'm just waiting for the jail and um, whichever other locations we have folks to show up. You get my email. Yes. Uh, did you send me another one, Jason? No, I just want. No, I got um, it. It's a first for number one. He would have been on there, but he got it. He was added on, so I didn't have him on the pool sheet when I sent the email this morning. Are we talking about Bates on the add-on? Yeah, okay. he was on. Yeah, this is first one. All right. <clears throat> Okay, courtroom two is available. I have someone connecting from somewhere in a library or some kind of book nook. So I will commence. It is 2.05 p.m. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Judge Law, and this is the Fulton State Expedited Accusation Calendar. This is a list of cases in which individuals who were recently arrested and booked at the Fulton County Jail, whereupon, um, let me pause for now. It looks like everyone's still settling in the courtroom, too. Deputies, uh, who is in courtroom two? Who is the deputy in courtroom two? Is it Francois or? Nora's in there. Oh, it's got to be someone. Union City, South Annex, um, are you on the Zoom? <clears throat> no. Good afternoon, Yana. Good afternoon. Who's speaking, please? This is Officer Norris. Now, Officer Norris, um, do you have almost everyone from the calendar in courtroom two? Uh, 95%. Okay. Uh, including some of the females? Including some of the females. Okay. All right. Uh, let me just make my opening statement. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Judge Law. This is going to be the expedited accusation calendar for the state of court of Fulton County. This would be a list of cases in which individuals were recently arrested and booked at the Fulton County Jail. Soon thereafter, their cases have been formally accused by the Fulton County Prosecutor, which is the Solicitor General's Office of Fulton County. Upon being accused, the case is bound over to state court. So this would be your initial appearance before a judicial officer. We will be addressing quite a few things in your particular cases. Namely, what are the charges brought against you? Who is going to be your attorney? What's your next court date? As well as what type of bond should you receive if one has not been previously set? This is a list of open, active criminal cases. So if you are a defendant, please remember that you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say about the facts of your case during the course of this virtual, recorded, and live streamed proceeding, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney and uh, we will have folks from the Public Defender's Office as well as Conflict Defender's Office able to represent you. If you do have a private attorney, please let me know when I call your case. 
Uh, Officer Norris, do we by any chance have position 19 in the courtroom? Ms. Williams? Uh, no, she's going to be an image reset, Your Honor. All right, position 19 is an MH reset to tomorrow, February 25th. All right, this would be a second reset. Um, Ms. Gant, Ms. Um, Kim, if you all want to entertain a waiver and consider bond, that's a possibility. Um, okay, so uh, is Ms. I can't remember position of eight, her last name. Amelia Folks. Amelia Folks, F O U L K E S. She's here. She's here. Um, Ms. Gant, if you could call the jail at 404 612 2392, you may have a conversation with Ms. Folks. Officer Morris, if you could send Ms. Folks over to the phone where she can converse with her attorney, that would be great. Uh, who do Thank we you, have? Ma and then um, okay. let me see who's who's in the chair right now. That's position number fifteen, Mr. Rick Rickard. All right, is uh, position five, Mr. Boyles, and Mr. Travis Williams also in the courtroom? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. All right, Travis Williams, please come forward and stand behind the uh, gentleman seated in the chair, as well as position number two, uh, excuse me, position five, Mr. Bo um, Lawrence Deshaun. Right All right, good. Come forward. All right. Okay, who is the PD um, in this case? Ms. Kim? Ms. Gant, is Ms. Gant the PD? Which one are we talking about? The position number one? 5, 15, and 20. 20 is mine, and 15 is, I conflict. believe, is conflict attorney that we have, and 5 is Ms. Wanda. All right. Okay. Mr. Lawrence is position number 5, and she is in conversation with her client, Ms. Folks. So Mr. Lawrence have a seat right behind right now. Okay, but Mr. Lawrence, Deshaun Lawrence, Deshaun, his case is 22 CR 001026B, accused of possession of marijuana less than one ounce. Mr. Travis Williams is case 22 CR 001022Y, um, accused of possession of marijuana less than one ounce. And position 15 is going to be Mr. Derek Ricard. That's my case, Judge. Oh, Mr. Murphy. Okay, great. Mr. Ricard. And Mr. Ricard is accused of possession of marijuana less than one ounce. Um, Mr. Honor, I, Mr. I thought Ricard. I was representing Lawrence DeBose in that same matter. Oh, perfect. I'm going to keep you there then. And Deshaun Lawrence, come back forward. I have, it says Lawrence DeBose, Your Honor. So I, I am not sure. Lawrence, what's your last name? Uh, Lawrence. Oh, no, you are position seven, Miss McLeod. Okay. All right. Sorry. All right. Thank so you. So Lawrence, Deshaun, your, um, your attorney is going to be Miss Wanda Gant, who is presently speaking to another client. Um, Mr. Is it the gentleman in the... Mr. Ricard, is that the yellow shirt gentleman? Yes, ma'am. Okay, your attorney is Dennis Murphy, and he is on the Zoom as well. And uh, Travis Williams, your attorney is Miss Kim, and she's on the Zoom as well. All three of you are misdemeanor possession of marijuana. Miss uh, Tucson, any priors on, um, I'm really interested. On record. Your Honor, I'm, sure, I'm sorry, Your Honor, but I'm showing Travis Williams as a co-defendant with my client. Who's your client? DuBose, Lawrence DuBose, and Travis Williams is showing here on the paperwork I received as a co-defendant. All right. Hold on. Oh, it's Lawrence. 
Lawrence, Lawrence oh, Deshawn is the co-defendant to Mr. Ricard. I see, Your Honor, there's just a misspelling on the paperwork I received. I have it as D-U-B-O-S-E. That's another, that's that's another, another case. That's, that's position another seven. Case. I'm not addressing that. Okay. Okay. All right. So going back to Lawrence Deshawn, position five, his attorney is Wanda Gant. Position 15, Mr. Ricard is represented by Dennis Murphy. And position 20, Travis Williams is represented by Ms. Kim. Mr. Tucson, I just need the priors on Derek Ricard. Uh, eight total. <clears throat> Last arrest was back in September, failure to appear. He has an open possession of a Schedule 1 controlled substance out of Coweta County. He has history out of um, Louisiana. I'm going to put it in the chat. Hold on. All right. And who's the prosecutor for this um, three cases? Alexis Gidry, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Goodry, uh, what is your recommendation for Derek Ricard? For Derek Ricard, he currently has a $1,500 surety bond. Mm -hmm. We ask that you maintain and issue no alcohol, drugs, or weapons. Um, that's because, Your Honor, in this case, of course, they were found to have marijuana within the vehicles. Yeah, the I've, I've, I've read all the warrants. Right. They're all the same. Yes. And, <laughs> and also due to his criminal history, as Pritchard has stated, I don't know if he sent you what he currently has open in Louisiana, but they're extensive. All right. And um, these, yes, he's the only one with a Louisiana address. Okay. Mr. And Murphy. Honor, yeah. Travis Williams also has history out of Louisiana as well. Is he a um, Louisiana resident? I didn't see that. I don't know if he's a resident or not, but he has criminal history out of Louisiana. And for Derek Ricard, if I can briefly go over the history without going into the other charge that he has open. Um, the, okay, this is possession of marijuana at a Lennox Mall over some kind of big powwow with the officers in the parking yes. deck. Okay, so I, and I understand the history, but it's really not going to be relevant to my bond decision. Okay. All right. Um, and I appreciate that, Ms. Goodry. I really do. And I do understand your concerns for Mr. Ricard. Mr. Murphy, you represent Mr. Ricard. Anything to add? Yes, Judge. He does have a local address. It is 9250 Wilkinson Mill Road in Palmetto, Georgia. He resides with his, with his uncle. He's age 27, Your Honor. He's underemployed. He does not have any immediate assets, credit card, or cash to go out on a bond. I'd like the court to consider a signature bond. This is a nonviolent offense. Nothing more, okay. nothing less. I'd ask the court to consider a signature bond. He has the local address. He's been there for almost four years. So he'll certainly report as directed. He's got a free lawyer staying with him the whole time. So all the more reason that, he, that he'll, he'll have every reason to report. All right. Thank you. All three gentlemen, you need to give your deputy your current mailing address. And uh, we'll need that. And deputy, if you could send that to... Um, Miss uh, Katrina, LM Katrina Lewis, you'll see her on the chat feature for all three of them. Uh, bond is set at $2,000. It's gonna be a signature bond through the jail for all three of them. All three of them have to stay away, 200 yards away from the entire Lennox Mall. Entire Lennox Mall. You cannot be in the parking deck, uh, in the stores, in the ice cream place, in the Starbucks, whatever is out there. And yeah. after today, all three of you can say your goodbyes and then you three are to stay away from each other. Yeah. Your next court date is going to be sent to your current mailing address that is in the, um, that you provide. They all have to be local. And all three of you are to abstain from all illegal drugs and all weapons and all firearms. If you get arrested again, uh, whatever bond you receive, any subsequent cases, your current signature bond through the jail will be converted to a cash bond only. Yes, ma'am. And when, when did you say our next court date again? Your next court date will be sent to you in the mail. It will be in a red embossed uh, invitation card okay. with music and uh, flowers attached. <laughs> Understood? Yes, ma'am. All right. We will see you. Um, so, um, Ms. Lewis, she'll be waiting for the new addresses and $2,000 signature bond. Jail. Thank you. 
Judge, thank you for your consideration. And Mr. Ricard, stay away from that mall across the street too. I wouldn't want you to take a chance and I'll reach out to your family. Thank you, Judge. Uh, no FIPS Plaza either. Okay, well, you heard your attorney's instructions. Thank you. All right, Thank moving you. on. Um, courtroom two. Uh, Ms. Kim. Would, you like to, would you like to speak to uh, actually do position number eight, Ms. Folks? Yes. Um, if Ms. Folks and Ms. Gant is ready, that would be great. Otherwise, Ms. Kim, Ms. Gant, are we ready? Yes, Your Honor. All right, this is position number eight. Uh, and Ms. Gant, on your prior case uh, involving Deshaun Lawrence, you got a $2,000 signature bond through the jail. And stay away from co-dependents co and stay away from Lennox Mall. I, thank you. I believe that was a conflict case, Your Honor, Deshaun Lawrence. That's what I thought. He needs a C3. Yeah, we need another conflict counsel for him. He can't, he can't be represented by PD. All right. So moving on, Ms. Gant, what's your announcement for Ms. Folks? Um, thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Um, Folks, the state offered pretrial diversion, and Ms. Folks accepts um, the pretrial um, diversion recommendation. Um, I will add that. Um, well. Perhaps if the state could present, then I would um, follow up. All right, Ms. Um, Ms. Goodry? Your Honor, we're recommending a $3,000 signature bond and no alcohol, drugs, or weapons. This is largely due, as Your Honor knows, that she took a replica fetus from a table. Uh, and yeah, I, I her, read the warrant. Yeah. Right. And she's, is she currently a student at Georgia Tech? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and is she... Um, and the only building in concern was the 777 Atlantic Drive location, right, on campus? Your Honor, that's the subject of the warrant. However, we are opposed to that stay away. She is a student there in her fourth year and she needs, has a reason. Will she, to be in will that she need to enter that building, 777 Atlantic Drive, where the display was and so forth? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Folks, do you need to enter that building? She's on mute. Um, I'm not sure exactly which building you're referring to. It was outside. Okay, the building's identified as 777 Atlantic Drive. Um, if Do you have classes in that building? If it's the Van Leer building, which is right by where the incident happened, um, I do have a class in that building. Um, I could attend online though. You can attend online, is that correct? Okay. Uh, Ms. Goodry, I'll agree to a $3,000 signature bond through the jail. She needs to uh, stay away from the building identified as 777 Atlantic Drive, at least 20 yards away. So if she has other adjoining buildings, that's fine. Um, Ms. Uh, Gant, your client will uh, review the application for pretrial diversion. And I assume that she's going to be admitted to that. Uh, and if, if pretrial diversion is refused or she doesn't comply, then uh, the solicitor's office can always ask for the case to be put back on uh, one of our um, either SAP calendars or uh, one of the ORCA calendars. And Your Honor, we just wanted to make clear that she hasn't been accepted yet. We just recommended and so her. That's why I said the application has to be reviewed by her. And if she accepts it or if she gets into the program and doesn't comply, then you can ask for the case to be put back on. But right now she has a $3,000 signature bond to the jail and to stay away from 20 yards away from that building. That concludes this case. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. What is that moaning sound? It, Your Honor, I'm having some construction oh, in my okay. home, so That's I do it. apologize. No problem, okay, no problem. Okay, um, Ms. Uh, Kim, you need to talk to Mr. Lugo. Is yes, Mr. Lugo in the courtroom? Se encuentra okay. el señor Lugo en la, en la sala. All right. Um, Miss, Miss Kim, do you have a way of calling into the jail and then putting Miss Lean on the uh, same phone call? I do not know whether the jail has that capacity. All right. Um, because otherwise, Mr. Lugo needs to go to a different terminal and be put out, put in a breakout oh, room. Oh. Um, 
let me try with my iPhone. Okay. Yes, I think you can do like a conference call. If you call the Jill and then you add me, then we can all be in the same call. Okay. Miss Kim, do you okay. have Miss Lean's uh, phone number? I put it on the chat, yes. Your Honor. Okay. And uh, the phone number at the jail is 404-612-2392. So yes. if you can get um, Mr. Lugo and Ms. Lean on the same phone call, y'all can have a confidential conversation offsite from the room. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, who do we have in courtroom two at the present time? All right. Your Honor, we have uh, position number four, Ms. Shaw. Thank you. Uh, we have Ms. Yasmin Dimitriadis Shaw, accused of criminal trespass uh, from February 23rd, 2022 in case 22CR 001027Y. Uh, Ms. Shaw, you've been advised of your right to remain silent and your attorney is going to be Ms. Gant. Um, Mr. Tucson, any prize? It's a third arrest. Last arrest was January 2021. Cruelty in the second degree, reckless conduct, possession of a knife or a firearm during the commission, possession of a schedule one or two controlled substance. That's out of Henry County. That's open. All right. And um, Ms. Goodry, what's the bond recommendation? Your Honor, she currently has a $3,000 surety bond. We ask that you maintain that bond. Issue no further contact with Vere Asa, V E E R A S A. I will spell the last name. It's kind of funny. Uh, I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, stay away from 512 Wimbledon Road, Atlanta, and no alcohol, drugs, or weapons. This is largely due to, as pretrial stated, her open case. I also so show that she has a warrant out of McDonald for a fade to appear from 2021. Um, and she also has an arrest out of Nevada for trespass out of 2011 with no disposition and the facts of this case, given that she broke into someone's home and was attempting to take a shower. So that's why we're asking for that stated recommendation. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Scant. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Today I will be requesting a signature bond on Ms. Um, Demetriadis' Shaw, Shaw's behalf. She is 36 years old. Um, she has been in the Atlanta area for a time. However, she does not have any family here. Therefore, she does not have any um, support to um, help with bond. Your Honor, she denies the allegations. She states that she was invited to the home on 512 Wimbledon Road. She was invited there by two friends of hers, two gentlemen by the name of Al and Brandon. She states that they had keys to the home and she she was led to believe that it was their family members homes. She states that she was taking a shower when the police arrested her and pulled her out naked and she still has belongings in that home including a laptop, an iPad, um, an 18 karat gold chain with the 14 karat gold setting, clothing and shoes. Um, she completed college. She um, was working at a nurse at one time and she now is um, pursuing studies in cybersecurity and she states that she um, recently lost her scholarship and she has been unemployed for the past three months. Therefore, she does not have the means to make bond. And your honor, she does have an open case. However, she is presumed innocent there and this is a um, nonviolent offense. Therefore, I am asking for a signature bond in her case and um, a one-time law enforcement escort to retrieve her belongings. And we are unopposed to the stay away. And um, your honor, just briefly, we do wanna state that the window was broken by the defendant to I get to the home. Yeah, well, I don't know who broke the window, so that's all I know. Uh, bond is set at $1,000. It's a surety bond. She is to stay away, 200 yards away from 512 Wimbledon Road in Atlanta, Georgia. There will be no one-time visit. Um, if she can identify the items, uh, she can relay the information to the Victim Advocate Division. At, um, counsel can relay the information to Victim Advocate Division and the alleged victim, Versa, last name beginning with the letter P, can identify those items to be surrendered to a local police precinct. But Ms. Uh, Demetrius Shah is not permitted to return to that location. Also, Ms. Gant, if you can get the identity of these two gentlemen who apparently have access to this property, that would certainly help matters move along. Yes. Uh, no illegal drugs, no weapons, and no firearms. Thank you. All right, thank Next you. court date is March 10th. 
because she is showing her address. Miss Gant, uh, your client's address on Odyssey is 512 Wimbledon Road, the same as the alleged victims, but in McDonough, Georgia. Does she have an alternative mailing address? Yes, Your Honor. Would you like um, that in the chat or? Yeah, if you could send that in the chat to Miss Katrina Lewis, we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we will do. Thank you. Next, we have your honor. Good afternoon. The South Annex, Ms. Balls, position number two. Milton, Milton, I need to take care of this last person so I can take it to intake. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Officer Norris, who do you have? I'm going to have position number 16, Ms. Jennifer Thompson, your honor. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, your honor. Pat Dixon on behalf of Ms. Jennifer Hello. Thompson. Hello, Mr. Dixon. All right. And Mr. Dixon represents Mr. Jennifer Judge. Thompson in case number 22CR 001023G uh, with regards to an incident occurring on January 24th, 2022. Ms. Thompson has been advised of her right to remain silent and her attorney is Mr. Pat Dixon. Um, Ms. Dixon qualifies for the pretrial services program Ms. Mitchell, do you have any objection? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay, uh, the objection from the state? Your Honor, did you hear? Yes, uh, what's your objection to a signature bond for pretrial for Ms. Thompson? Well, Your Honor, we recommended a, the $3,000 surety bond with the no further contact, the stay away, one to anger awareness course, and no alcohol, drugs, and weapons. Our objection is going to be based on the police report, um, which is able to provide more information than what the warrant showed. Um, <clears throat> this was a situation where um, the defendant and her co-defendant, Soraya Benoit, um, jumped the victim in this case, Miss Kirsten Franklin, spelled K-I-E-R-S-T-E-N, Franklin. Um, they both jumped on her to fight and Miss Franklin's brother had to jump in to pull the defendant off of Miss Franklin. Miss um, Franklin suffered a scratch, small marks and a possible broken toe as a result of the assault. So that's gonna be the basis of our $3,000 surety recommendation. Your Honor. Bond is gonna be set at $5,000. It's a signature bond through pretrial services. She is to stay away from 2796 Third Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. Judge, Judge yeah. if I may, um, the home that the incident occurred, 2796 Third Avenue, that's Miss Thompson's home. Um, her, the fight oh. uh, with the victim. Let, let me uh, let me finish first. Let me finish first. Okay. All right. So she's to stay away from 2796 Third Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, as as long as her other roommates, uh, Miss Kirsten Franklin, and I'm assuming Ryan Franklin, still live there. No, they, they don't. Are, they don't. Okay. So she can go back one time only with a police officer to retrieve her personal belongings and verify that the property is no longer uh, habitated by Mr. and Ms. Franklin. Right. Um, Your Honor, if I may, the report states that Ms. Franklin said that she was moving out of town soon and will no longer be at the house, but Mr. Franklin and Mr. Ben Ms. Benoit own the home. So her brother does own the home it's, based on the police. Your Honor. Your Honor, that's just not true. Ms. Benoit, uh, the, the owner of the home is Jennifer Thompson. She owns the home. Ms. Benoit was living there um, and the alleged victim in this case was just spending a couple of days there. That is correct. Ms. Mitchell is correct. She doesn't reside in California now. She's no longer in the state. Does Ryan Franklin live there? Ryan Franklin is no longer at the residence anymore. They're in the process of closing and uh, trying to sell the um, home. So no one will be residing. Well, Mr. Franklin won't be residing there anymore. They're going through a refi well, right this now. Is what so happens. he's no longer at the home. This is what happens when folks get arrested and there's an issue about who lives where. So sure. I'm back to my original ruling. Stay away from 2796 Third Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. She can go back one time only with a police officer uh, to retrieve her personal belongings and ascertain that both Ryan Franklin and Kirsten Franklin do not live there or do not reside there. If mm -hmm. both of them have vacated the premises, she can return to the property. Uh, she's to have no contact with Kirsten Franklin and no contact with Ryan Franklin. 
and no illegal drugs, no alcohol, and no weapons. This is a $5,000 signature bond through pretrial. She will report to pretrial once a month. She will undergo a one-day anger awareness program that is conducted by the uh, pretrial services. And um, if she returns to the Third Avenue location and lives there, then we have a good address on her. But if she has an alternative address due to this bond, then she needs to update us with her uh, new address within 30 days of being released. And Mr. Dixon, if you could file an entry of appearance as well, that would move things along. Would do, Your Honor. All right, and Ms. Thompson, if you get arrested again, or if you violate any of the conditions of the bond, your $5,000 uh, signature bond will be converted to a surety bond, which means you have to pay to bond out the next time. Understood? All right, anything else, Mr. Dixon? Nothing further from us, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Uh, Judge, Thank can you. you integrate with the judge on the jail to give me those gentlemen address? They still have not sent it to me in the chat. I think Officer Norris is busy managing. Oh, okay. so as soon as he does, he will. All right. Next case is Miss uh, South Fulton and uh, it was Holly Nicole Boyles, position two, case number 22CR 001024C. Ms. Boyles is accused of forgery in the fourth degree with respect to an August 10th, 2019 incident. Uh, Ms. Boyles, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney and representing you is Ms. Wanda Gant. Okay, Ms. Gant, okay. And... Um, all right. Um, you ready? Yes, I am. Go ahead. 25 total between Georgia, Tennessee, Delaware, and Maryland. On probation. Uh, I got probation out of Cherokee and Henry County. Uh, let me start right here. Um, January 2022, theft by deception. Identity theft fraud. Those were convictions out of Paulding County. All right, January, she had arrest out of Hiram. Well, that is Paulding County, I'm sorry. Uh, I got identity theft fraud conviction from June 2021 out of Cherokee. 15 years probation for that. April 2021, forgery third degree, theft by deception, identity theft fraud out of Douglas County. December 2020, Forsyth County, identity theft fraud, three, four, five, that's six counts, that's open. December 2020, forgery third degree, identity theft fraud out of Dunwoody. December 2020, the cab, identity theft fraud, two counts, two counts forgery in the third degree, one count theft by deception. That's open. Uh, conviction for identity theft fraud out of Henry County. Got eight years probation for that back in 2020. You want me to go into the other states? No, we're good. Thank you, Tucson. Thank you. Mr. Segura, what is your recommendation for Mr. Boyles? Uh, the state is recommending a $5,000 surety bond and no alcohol, drugs, and weapons. I stay away from BJ's located at 3585 North Commerce Drive, East Point. We'll base our recommendations on the facts of this case as long as you have a real concern, there's a huge risk of reoffending because the defendant has a long history of ID theft and 4G related crimes. As such, that, that's the basis. All right, Ms. Gant. All right, thank you, Yana. Today I will be requesting a signature bond on Ms. Boyle's behalf. She does not have the means to make any bond at this time. If your honor determines that she is ineligible, then the lowest bond possible. She um, informs me that she denies these allegations. She states that she has been incarcerated um, for two and a half years. She's 41 years old. Um, she has been in the Atlanta area for four and a half years. She has some family here, including her boyfriend and um, children. Um, her children are ages 18 and 21. She completed high school and again, she's unemployed. Um, she has some immediate health care needs that um, need to be addressed. She has informed me that she has some um, breast lumps that had recently increased in size on ultrasound. So she desperately needs to um, be released so that she can take care of that. And also um, a signature bond, Your Honor, to address the um, hold that is in Denton, Maryland. Thank you. 
$2,500 surety bond. Stay away from all BJ's, um, I don't know what you call it. It's like a Wholesale, Costco. Wholesale store. Wholesale store. Okay. All of them. Thank you. Next court date is March 10th. Thank you. Thank you, Rana. May we be excused? Yes, Stephanie Milton. Have a good one. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, courtroom two, who do we have? Position number 14, Mr. Reynolds. Colleen Vaughn Reynolds is accused of carrying a weapon without a valid license from February 23rd, 2022 in case number 22CR 001034F. You've been advised of your right to remain silent and your attorney is going to be Miss Ms. Gant, Ms. McLeod. Great Mr. afternoon, Your Honor. Attorney Ben Sheeta. Of All um, right, sir. All right, your attorney is Mr. Ben Sheeta. All right, um, Mr. Tucson, any priors on Mr. Reynolds? Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Mitchell, what's the state's recommendation? Yeah, I've read the warrant, and has anybody else been arrested from this yeah, for, for state cases? Any cases, I don't know, but I do know the other males that were involved were arrested. Brooks Green, Harris Brown, Hall Jr. Do they have felony cases or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what's the recommendation for Mr. Reynolds with the misdemeanor carrying a weapon without a ballot license? The state's recommendation is going to be a $4,000 surety and no alcohol, drugs, and weapons. Um, the base, the reason for our $4,000 surety recommendation is going to be mainly due to the facts and circumstances surrounding the situation, him base essentially being the lookout for a group of males with outstanding warrants and letting them know, hey, the police are coming, which caused them to disperse. Um, when the officers were trying to detain them and in the midst of that, him sliding the large handgun to a co-defendant. Um, as your honor is aware, the state takes any and all cases involving firearms very seriously. And based on that, we are recommending $4,000 surety. Mr. Benchida. Yes, your honor. We're asking for a signature bond uh, in this matter. Um, it is our intent uh, belief that it, it wasn't a lookout that he was actually called back to the scene and he returned on his own will. Uh, he's 18 years old. Uh, he would live in Atlanta with his mom. And oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Shida, your um, Zoom just froze. It's going so well, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, uh, Mr. Reynolds, uh, have a seat. We will resume with your attorney as soon as he's available. We'll take the next case. Mr. Benchida, I'm so sorry. We lost your internet connection. Um, you, you were talking about his mother. Okay, can you hear me now, Your Honor? Yes, yes. All right, so uh, he would be living with his mother and his father. Um, he was, he got his high school diploma. Uh, right now he's working on going to college. He has two options, whether uh, Savannah State or the University of West Georgia. Uh, prior to this, he was working deluxe staffing. Uh, he'll be able to get that job back uh, once he's released. Uh, there he'll be operating machinery and packaging boxes. Um, this is his first offense, Your Honor. Um, so I believe he, he deserves a signature bond. So that's what we're asking for. Well, yes, but a, a first offense involves a firearm and I don't do signature bonds and firearms. Bond is set at $1,500. It is a surety bond. Uh, no contact with uh, co-defendant Sanchez Brooks. Uh, I only have the last name Green. Another one, Harris Brown, hyphenated. Fourth one is Courtney Hall Jr. Stay 200 yards away from the Donnelly Food Market at 1294 Donnelly Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. And no weapons, no firearms. They cannot be on any on his person in his home in any vehicle he occupies or anywhere near him. And also, um, well, he, can't, he just can't have any guns. 
All right, and we will uh, see him on March 10th. If he makes bond, please make sure that we have a good address on him so that we can send him his new court date. Perfect. Mr. Benchda, if you please file an entry of appearance, that would help move matters along. Will do, Your Honor. That concludes right. my business. May I please be excused? Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, what was that bond amount for Mr. Reynolds? 1,500 surety bond, no weapons, no firearms, and to stay away from all his padres. Thank you. We got position number 10, Mr. Lay. Position number 10. We good? Okay. Daryl Lay is case number 22 CR 001018F, accused of simple battery and obstruction of a law enforcement officer from February 23rd, 2022. Uh, involving one misuse. That's all I have in the warrant. But um, Mr. Um, Lay has been advised of his right to remain silent and his attorney will be, uh, is it Miss Ms. McLeod or Miss Kim or Miss Gant? Well, let me have some good. Let me Public defense attorneys, uh, Ms. Gant, are you It is a conflict case, Your Honor. It is a conflict case. I am not sure who the uh, attorney oh, is. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So we don't have a Mr. Murphy online. He wasn't in point. So he spoke and to the reason McLeod, Your Honor. I'm sorry? He spoke to uh, attorney McLeod. McLeod. Oh, Ms. McLeod. Okay. Yes, McLeod? he did speak to me, Your Honor, but I did not receive any paperwork on him at all. Okay, uh, is the public defender's office representing him or is this a con matter that's been conflicted out? Um, they, they sent my paperwork to him. This is a conflict case, Your Honor. I did speak to him, Your Honor, but I, I, I did not receive any paperwork for him. But when All I right. called the jail, I did speak with him. And Ms. McLeod, are you representing him in the capacity as a conflict counsel? I, I'm prepared to do that, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Ms. Uh, Ms. McLeod, you are waiting on the accusation and any warrants that were attached. That would be with Mr. Segura. Mr. Segura, do you have any documentation that was supposed to have been sent to uh, the public defender's office for this case? Um, I'm not certain. I'm trying to look for it. Sure. Your Honor, normally what I receive one who is- sends it, but Odyssey keeps locking up and I can't, I'm having a lot of trouble sending out paperwork right now. All right, Ms. Glover. And usually, your Honor, I receive a declaration of conflict for each person that I'm representing, and I did not receive one for him. All right. There's, can I say something? Yes, I'm go sorry. ahead. Apparently, this, this afternoon, Ms. Kim was sending out individual uh, conflict things, and it was so many of them when we were trying to de deviate from well, And the one that you had that we said for Deshaun, they were typing them up, but they were responsible for typing up, and I can understand why there was miscommunication of the other people, the other three defendants, you were supposed to represent the right one. You had that right name. They mistyped it on the paperwork. So I'm gonna try to find the uh, paperwork for you or Mr. Jordan can find it and forward it to you of uh, this uh, um, defendant. Because okay. They were typing up a lot of stuff and I think they got some stuff cross wired in their requests. All right, Deputy Officer Norris, can we please Mr. Darrell lay on hold as soon as Ms. McLeod gets her paperwork, which you'll be in a better position to proceed. Okay. Your Honor, if, if Ms. McLeod would just direct message me her email, I have the police report and the accusation that I can just send her. Yes, right I can do okay. that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Ms. Fault. Okay, yeah, next case in courtroom two, please. We're we going to go to position number seven, Mr. DeBose. All right. And that's the one she's doing. And Ms. McLeod, that's the one that you do represent. There we go. That is correct, Your Honor. All right. Uh, case number 22CR 001032E, State versus Julius Mark Debo, D U B O S E, accused of driving while license suspended and open possession, I mean, open possession of an open alcohol container from February 23rd, 2022. Mr. Debo has been advised of his right to remain silent, and his counsel is Ms. McLeod. Um, Mr. Tucson, any priors, please? No, Your Honor, I apologize for interrupting. I'm representing Mr. DuBose. Julius DuBose. Oh, no, right. the one I have is Lawrence DuBose. 
I'm, that's what I'm saying. They put the wrong, y'all, y'all send the request out. Whoever typed it up, they cross referenced the wrong names on the request. So Mr. Oh. So Mr. Lawrence was supposed to be represented by Mr. by Ms. Uh, McLeod. And whoever sent the request, they they cross referenced the names. Whoever typed up the paperwork, they put the wrong name with the wrong information. All right. So uh, let me just I, I honestly, guys, I cannot fight with uh, typos and scrivener's errors, but I can try to untangle this little knot. So Ms. Gant, have you spoken to Mr. DeBose? Julius DeBose. Have you spoken to him? Yes, Jonna, Julius DeBose. You have conferred with him, okay. And Ms. McLeod, have you conferred with Mr. DeBose as well? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. That's and Mr. Lawrence DeBose. <laughs> I believe Lawrence's name is Deshore. D no, 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 no. no. Folks, 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 this is not a moment to have a conversation. Right. I, I apologize, Your Honor. Ms. McLeod, you do yeah. not represent Julius Mark DeBose. I um, do not, Your Honor. Okay, excellent. Thank you. So we're just going to let Ms. Wanda Gant proceed. Ms. Wanda Gant, uh, you represent Julius Mark DeBose, the gentleman seated in courtroom two right now. And um, he is your client. And Tucson, may I have his priors, please? This is ninth arrest. Mm -hmm. uh, last arrest was back in November. Out of Sandy Springs probation violation. 2015 suspended license. 2015 DUI conviction. 2013 failure to appear not prosecuted. 2009 marijuana possession. 06 FTA not prosecuted. And the 05 shoplifting dead docket. He has a hold out of Carnesville. But it's a 2016 warrant, so I don't I doubt if they come. I put a Franklin County hole and a Carnesville. That might be the same thing. Is Carnesville in Franklin County? Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay. It's so it's thing. one hold out of Franklin County. Then. Okay, okay, yeah. Thank you. Ms. Mitchell, what's your recommendation? Yeah, Your Honor, the state's bond recommendation is going to be a $2,000 surety bond, um, $1,000 as to each count, and no alcohol, drugs, and weapons. Um, the state's biggest concern here is defendant's risk of reoffending. Risk of reoffending, yes. Uh, the defendant is likely to reoffend due to his history. He has a BUI conviction in 2015. He also has a previous drinking with suspended license, driving with suspended license charge in 2015. Um, we're also concerned defendant is a flight risk. Um, he is a substantial flight risk. Um, as stated, the current uh, outstanding warrant for the failure to appear out of Carnesville, Georgia, which he was stopped on. Um, and he has two failure to appears in Gwinnett, one failure to appear in Clayton County, four failure to appears on his driving rec record in totality, and one probation violation as last year. So right. that's going to be the basis of our recommendation. And, and just to correct the record, the alleged traffic stop was because the owner of the vehicle which he was operating allegedly has outstanding probation warrant. The owner is not Mr. DeBose. Oh, understood. Okay. So he wasn't stopped because of his holes. It was the holes apparently governing the owner of the vehicle, which is not Mr. DeBose. All right, Ms. Uh, Gant, uh, what is your recommendation? Your Honor, I'm requesting a signature bond on Mr. DuBose's behalf. Um, and if Your Honor determines that he is ineligible, then a bond of no more than $1,000, and that would be $500 for each count. Uh, Mr. DuBose is 35 years old. He does have significant ties to the Atlanta area. He has been here all of his life and he has family, including his mother and two children. He is the primary caretaker of those um, twin sons. He completed high school. He is a self-trained chef. He has been working at the Belmont Brewing Company times one year. He is a sous chef there and he's due back to work. He informed me that he is the only person who is actually working in his household. Um, therefore, he desperately needs to get back to work. And your honor, for these reasons, I am requesting a signature bond. Or, and again, if your honor determines that he's ineligible, then a bond of no more than $1,000. Thank you. Uh, driving while license suspended is going to be 1500 and possession of an open alcohol contain container is 500 Full bond is set at 2000 It is a surety bond. 
No driving unless he has a valid driver's license, not an identity card. It must be a current valid driver's license. I don't care from which state, as long as it's current and valid. And um, proper registration for the vehicle being driven and adequate automobile insurance. No illegal drugs, no alcoholic beverages, and no weapons and no firearms. Next court date is going to be March 10th. And next case, please, courtroom two. Proposition number 17, Mr. Whitehead. We have Jamar Jason Lee Whitehead, accused of DUI, driving under the influence of alcohol less safe, and operating without uh, the appropriate lights as required by law. Uh, this is from a February 24th, 2022 incident. And Mr. Whitehead, uh, you've been advised of your right to remain silent, and your attorney is Ms. Kim. Mr. Tucson, any prize? This is third arrest. Last arrest was back in November for DUR. 2019 DUR. So it's open. I'm sorry, 2019 DUI? November 2021 DUI? Correct. You got two open DUIs. Oh, your mom is really going to be upset with you. Okay. Um, Ms. Mitchell, what's the recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. As to count one, we're recommending $3,000 cash bond. Count two, $500 cash bond. So that'll total $3,500 in cash bond. No driving, an ADT, random drug screens, and no alcohol, drugs, and weapons. Um, the state's concern is defendant's likelihood of reoffending. Um, as pretrial stated, he already has two open DUI cases, making this his third. Um, he was also in DUI court when he was picked up on this case. He was transferred to DUI court on February 4th of this year. Nothing further, Your Honor. Ms. Kim? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Whitehead is 22 years old. Um, actually, he denies that he was actually uh, drunken that day. He didn't, there's no blood test, no breath test. He, he was not drunken. However, um, he's here and he completely denies the allegation. He's been here in Georgia for five to six years and he's a personal trainer as a national martial arts. He's a professional fighter, and he's been doing that about five to six years. He graduated from college, I mean, high school. He didn't go to college, and yet uh, he makes his own living by being a personal trainer. Um, we would like to request for a uh, uh, shorty bond instead of a cash bond. He does not have uh, capacity to pay for a cash bond, so we would like to request for $3,500 surety bond. And also this ADET is kind of like a unnecessary because he's, as, a, as the Mitchell said, he's already gone to DUI court. So I think it's kind of repetitive. So we would like to uh, ask for not to have ADET. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor. Ms. Mitchell, is it Fulton County DUI court? Um, let me, yes. Is it being administered yes, by, I, I think it was Judge Edline or, okay. On, uh, what, yes, what else oh. was it, Mitchell? Yes, um, just to put on the record, um, the defendant, there was an overwhelming amount of evidence of defending of the DUI in this case. Um, on defendant, um, he also admitted to the officers that he drank two to three beers about 30 to 40 minutes prior to being stopped, in addition to the liquid container found in the back seat that smelled of alcohol. Nothing further, Your Honor. On the uh, DUI less safe, that's going to be a $2,000 cash bond only. On the operating without the appropriate line, says the $500 surety bond. Total bond is $2,500. That's a split bond. No driving, no driving at all. Ma'am, what a, what open alcohol container are they talking about? Would you, uh, sir, may I please advise you not to speak about the case? Uh, it is strongly against because you may hurt your case. 
The officer in the warrant indicated that there was an empty uh, beverage cup that smelled of an alcoholic beverage. Anything else? Your Honor, uh, I do have one thing to add. Um, reading this order, it looks like he was, he had to first enter the program in Fulton and then his compliance will be transferred to Cobb County DUI upon completion because he is a resident of Cobb County. And that was signed by Judge Besson. Okay. So um, right now his bond is 2,500. It is a split bond, 2,000 cash and 500 surety on the headlights issue. Uh, absolutely no driving. And um, his next court date is March 10th. No illegal drugs, no alcoholic beverages, no weapons and no firearms. Thank you. Come on, you go sit down. We're gonna go to position number nine, Mr. Tobias Jackson. Mr. Tobias Jackson has got a simple battery against an officer uh, and a, a criminal trespass misdemeanor charge again with respect to an incident that occurred about a couple of days ago. 222 and the case number is 22 CR 000986 B. This is a medical reset from yesterday. Mr. Jackson, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney and you are represented by Ms. Wanda Gann. Um, 40 total. Last arrest was June 2021. Robbery by sudden snatch. May 2021, failure to appear, possession of cocaine. July 2020, simple battery. That's, that's good. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Goodrich? Yes, Your Honor, we're recommending for count one, the simple battery, a $2,500 surety. For count two on criminal trespass, a $1,000 surety. No further violent contact with Officer M. Wyatt. <clears throat> a stay away from MARTA. One day anger awareness and no alcohol, drugs, or weapons. This is largely due to his criminal history. As pretrial stated, he has two open cases, one out of Mar Marta for robbery and the second a simple battery that was transferred to state court. Um, he also has a failure to appear 2021 and 2020, making him a flight risk. And his criminal history dates back to 1993. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of his history. I'm aware of it. Your Honor, as uh, if I Ms. may. Ms. Goodry, uh, actually... Um, I'm going, to take it, I'm going to take it upon my hands, okay? Uh, Mr. Jackson, on the simple battery, your bond is going to be set at 2,000. The criminal trespass is 500. And you have a permanent ban from all modern property as indicated by the warrant. So stay away from all modern property. Uh, Officer Lawrence, I want to do. That's why, Ms. Godry, I wanted to cut it short. I have a feeling things were going to get a little heated. Um, well, Your Honor, may I just put my request on the record? You may. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Jackson, um, Tobias Jackson is 44 years old. He is a long-term Atlanta resident. Um, he has family here who including a daughter. He um, completed, he obtained a GED. He also has one well, in business. Ms. Gant, we already mm -hmm. left. Let me go, let me grab That's her. That's okay. That's her. okay. She's just putting it on the record. That's fine. Oh, okay. That's okay. fine. Go ahead. Sorry, Ms. Gant. Sorry for that. Please continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Jackson is disabled. Um, he has been so for the past four years and his disability is interfering with his stay in jail. He has some back issues um, that makes it difficult to walk. Um, I am requesting a signature bond, Your Honor. He is unable to make bond at this time. In those open cases, he is presumed innocent. And if Your Honor determines that he's ineligible for a signature bond, then Your Honor, the lowest bond possible and we are unopposed to the stay away. Thank you. Well, um, I, I appreciate your information. Unfortunately, given the egregious nature of the allegations, as well as the permanent ban for MARTA, the 2,500 surety bond um, and the stay with more MARTA property, as well as no contact with Gregory Hodge. 
I'm going to put in there, no contact with Gregory Hodge. His next court date is March 10th. Hopefully he'll be in a more accommodating mood. Uh, sir, what's your name, please, in courtroom two? This is position six, Mr. Dixon, but real quick, Dixon. Judge, Lott, hold on, hold on, Mr. Dixon. Is his uh, bond being modified or is it staying the same? Uh, it's two, no, it's the same bond, 2,500 surety, 2,500. It's not changed. It's not changed from my ruling. Okay. Okay. What was the name of the officer? Uh, position six, Mister Dixon. Yeah. Okay. Just one second, please. Mister Darius Dixon is accused of simple battery from a February 23rd, 2022 incident. Um, and um, Ms. Dixon, you've been advised of your right to remain silent. Your attorney is um, Ms. Is it Ms. Gant? Okay. And uh, any priors, Mr. Tucson? This is fourth arrest. Last was 2011 probation violation. You don't have any violence or anything. All right. Just mar um, uh, marijuana conviction. And Ms. Goodry, what's the bot state's recommendation? Your Honor, we're recommending a $2,000 surety bond, no further contact with Marjorie Dixon, a stay away from 2632 South Hill, South Fulton, one day anger awareness and no alcohol, drugs or weapons. Your Honor, we do understand that he only has one conviction for marijuana. However, given that we talked to the victim and the victim stated in the facts that this is not the first time that this has occurred, um, the victim and the defendant are still living together. Um, and we want to ensure the safety of the victim. So that's why we're asking for the stated recommendation. All right, thank you. Ms. Gant, I'm gonna set a 2,500 signature bond through pretrial services. He is to have no contact with Marjorie Dixon. He is to stay away from the property, 2632 South Hills in South Fulton. He can go back one time only with a police officer to retrieve his personal belongings. No illegal drugs, no alcohol, no weapons and no firearms. He will report to pretrial once a month and be subject to um, screenings. He also needs to undertake the one day anger awareness class administered by pretrial. No illegal drugs, no alcohol, no weapons and no firearms. Thank you. Thank you, Yana. All right, oh, and one more thing. Mr. Dixon will have to um, let us know his new address within 30 days of being released. Thank you. And Yana, um, just for the record, um, I did reach out to um, Ms. Dixon, what, but was unable to um, touch base with her. Okay. Well, hopefully she'll contact you eventually. Thank you, Yana. Next case, please, in courtroom two. This is position 18, Mr. Williams. Where's Williams? Williams. Yes, ma'am. We have Dante Williams uh, accused of battery, domestic violence, and cruelty in third degree uh, from a October 28, 2020 incident. Um, Mr. Williams, case number is 22CR001029D. And Mr. Williams, you've been advised of your right to remain silent, and your attorney is going to be um, Ms. Kim. Now, with regard to this case, Mr. Tucson, any priors? Well, total. Last arrest was April 2020. Cruelty in the third, simple battery, ag assault strangulation. Uh, I think that's 20 CP191091. Uh, 2019 failed to appear possession of cocaine. It says warrant was uh, withdrawn. 2019 misdemeanor obstruction. Uh, 2016 cocaine dismissed. He had battery family violence from 2014 that was dismissed. 2010 probation violation. Simple battery. No low of uh, hindering person from making emergency call. That was no low as well from 2009. Okay. That's, that's good, thank you. Ms. Mitchell? Yes, the state's bond recommendation, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be, a, as the count one, $3,000 surety, 
plus the count to $3,000 surety. So that's totaling $6,000 surety. No further contact with victim Tanya Jones. Um, we're also gonna request that he not be given third party contact with their child um, at this time. Uh, stay away from the address 3310 Santana Lane, Al Alpharetta, Georgia, a one day anger awareness course and no alcohol, drugs and weapons. So your honor, the state's concern of that defendant is a risk of reoffending. Um, as briefly heard by Preachall, he does have a bit of a violent history. Uh, he has the open case from 2020 for aggravated assault strangulation, simple battery, and cruelty to child in third degree, where he strangled another woman in front of her children. It may or may not be defendant's kids because they all have the last name Williams as well. Um, on that case, he got a $15,000 surety bond, um, $10,000 for the strangulation, uh, $2,500 as to the other two counts. Um, he also has a battery family violence charge in 2014 and a simple battery obstruction and simple battery and obstruction um, that he played Nolo to in 2009, as heard from pretrial. Um, we're also concerned of defendant being a flight risk uh, due to his current outstanding warrant um, out of Adele, Georgia for a probation violation and two failure to appears in one probation violation. We're, we're also asking that he not be given the third party contact with the child due to safety concerns for the child. Um, as stated in the warrant, um, he battered Miss Jones as she was getting their son, who was a three month old baby at the time out of the car. So she was holding the baby while he attacked her. And in the midst of that, he grabbed the baby. And while he was grabbing the baby from her, he then struck the baby in the head. So uh, this was a case from 2020. The child is still not even two years old today. So we do not feel uh, the child is safe um, around the defendant at this time. So that's gonna be the basis of our recommendation, Your Honor. Ms. Gant? Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Kim? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Williams is um, 37 years old and he said he has not contacted Mr. Tonya Johns for the last three years. He completely denies allegation. He does not even know 3310 Santana Lane, Alfreda, Georgia. He, he's, he has never been there. So he is claiming that this is fabricated because he has a new girlfriend for about two years and they are very happy right now. He has been working really hard for two jobs. He works one with a logistics company. He makes really good money. He works 40 hours a week. And after that, he goes to security at night. The only pay is $9 per hour, but it kind of gives him extra cash for him to take care of his children. So since my concern for him is actually he has a diabetes condition right now. He's type one diabetes and his blood sugar level is more than 400, which is if you have a more than 200, you have to go to emergency room and he is not able to get that medical attention. And I'm afraid of his uh, dehydration. I'm very concerned about that. And he has not been able to get his medicine. So he really, really needs to get medical attention for this. And, um, he also has ITT. Uh, he went to ITT for six months for computer science. Anyway, um, that's it. And we would like to request for $6,000 signature bond, Your Honor. Uh, is your client not know who Tonya Jones is or he's not seen her for the last three he, years? He has not seen her for the last three years. Okay. On the uh, battery domestic violence, the bond is going to be set at 2,500. On the cruelty is 500. Full bond is 3,000. It is a surety bond. And uh, next court date is March 10. No contact with Tonya Jones. No contact with the uh, child with whom he has with Miss Jones. If he seeks to have visitation or custody with respect to that minor child, he would need to file a legitimation action. Uh, he's to stay 200 yards away from 3310 Santana Lane in Alpharetta, Georgia. No illegal drugs, no weapons, no firearms, and uh, no alcoholic beverages. Thank you. 
Thank you, Your Honor. 2,500 on battery, 500 on the cruelty. Uh, is Mr. Lugo ready? <clears throat> we have our interpreter on hold. Yes, Your Honor. So we I'll take you up as soon as I'm done with my interpreter case. This is positions 12 and 13. Uh, Ms. Lean, if you yes. mind, may I throw you in? Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the translation you provide from English to Spanish and vice versa will be a true and accurate translation with no changes or embellishments? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, this is two cases involving one Carnala Lugo. Estos son dos casos que tienen que ver con Juan uh, Pablo Lugo. First case is 22 CR 001031F, in which el, Mr. Lugo is charged with criminal trespass. El primer caso es el 22 CR 001035F, donde se le acusa al señor Lugo por, en, eh, por allanamiento de morada. The second case is 22 CR 00103F, in which he is charged with battery, domestic violence, and two el, counts of cruelty to children. El segundo caso es el 22 CR 001305F, uh, en, el cual, en el cual se le acusa uh, por uh, lesiones y agresión corporal y por crueldad hacia los menores, dos casos de crueldad hacia los menores. The first case um, criminal trespass is from a August 2nd, 2021 incident. El primer caso de entrada ilegal y llenamiento de morada es, pasó el 2 de agosto del 2021. And the second case is from September 18, 2021. Y el segundo, el segundo caso es del 18 de septiembre del 2021. Both cases involve the alleged same victim and the alleged same location. Uh, en los dos casos, este, se alega es hacia la misma víctima y hacia el, en el mismo lugar donde ocurrieron la, los hechos. Mr. Lugo has the right to remain silent about the facts of the case. Anything he says, his statements can and will be used against him. El señor Lugo tiene el derecho a permanecer callado. Cualquier cosa que diga eh, puede ser usado en contra de él. He has a right to an attorney and representing him is Ms. J. Kim. Él tiene el derecho a tener un abogado y quien lo representa es la señorita J. Kim. Mr. Tucson, are there any prior um, convictions for Mr. Lugo? Que si hay algunas, algunas condenas anteriores, pero el señor Lugo está preguntando a la fiscal. Six total. Seis en total. Last arrest was 2008, ag assault not presented to grand jury. Y la última fue en el 2008, que fue le presentó al gran jurado. Y era un oath. Was there any prior violence? No. Outside no. of that one, no. Afuera de esto no había otras de violencia. That's good then. Mr. Segura? Yes. For the first case of criminal trespass. Para el caso de entrada, allanamiento de morada o entrada ilegal sin permiso. We are recommending a $2,000 surety bond. I'm sorry, how much? At $2,000. Uh, estamos recomendando una, una fianza uh, con la compañía de fianza o con un fiador de dos mil dólares. No alcohol, drugs, and weapons. No puede usar uh, dro drugs and weapons. Uh, alcohol, too. Ok, no puede usar ningún tipo de alcohol o drogas ni, ni armas de fuego. And a one day angle awareness. And one day of what, I'm sorry. Uh, anger. Anger, anger management, okay. Y un día uh, de, uh, para poder este controlar el temperamento. The basis of this recommendations. La base de estas recomendaciones es la siguiente. Is that the defendant broke a kitchen window. El acusado rompió una ventana de la cocina. Because the victim. Porque la víctima. Doris Aguilera. Spelled. Doris, Doris uh, Aguilera. Spelled D O R I S A G U I L E R A. Uh, Doris Aguilera, que se escribe D O R I S, y luego Aguilera es A G U I L E R A. We're not opening the front door for him to let him in. No habría. Uh, 
Look at the window. Okay. No, uh, the front door of the apartment. Okay. Porque ella no abría la puerta principal del apartamento. So let him in. Para dejarlo entrar. Because she did not want to have an argument with the defendant in front of her child. Porque ella no quería tener ningún tipo de argumento o de discusión con el acusado en frente del niño. Right. And the second case? As for the second case, we are recommending. El segundo caso, estamos recomendando lo siguiente. A $5,000 surety bond, $4,000 on battery, and $1,000 on cruelty to children. Uh, un bono, uh, una confianza um, uh, con un fiador, con una compañía de fianza de $5,000, donde son $4,000 por el cargo de, uh, de lesiones y $1,000 por el car los cargos de agresión hacia menores. Perdón, no, de, I, de crueldad hacia menores. No, I call drugs and weapons. No puede tomar alcohol ni tener ni poseer armas. One day anger awareness. También tiene que tener eh, el, 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 el para, para este, poder controlar el temperamento. A stay away from the property. Y mantenerse alejado de la propiedad. Thailand Soko Apartments. De los apartamentos. What is it? Thailand Apartments? Uh, Highland Circle Apartments. Oh, Highland Circle Apartments. Hay que mantenerse alejado de estos apartamentos, este complejo de apartamentos. Uh, 201 Northwood Drive. Al 201 North. Tengo ubicado en 201 Northwood Drive. Apartment G2, Sandy Springs. El apartamento G, G2 en Sandy Springs. And no photo contact with Doris Aguilera and her child, which they share unless the defendant has been properly legitimized. Y no te puede tener más contacto con Doris Aguilar ni con el menor de edad a menos de que el menor de edad haya sido legitimizado. Our recommendations are based on these facts as well as we are concerned about the lack of community ties. Uh, can, can you repeat that for me, please? Because I kind of broke down the... the, uh -huh. the... Our recommendations are based on. Nuestras recomendaciones están basadas en lo siguiente. On these facts. En los hechos que se han presentado. And a concern. Y, un, y una preocupación. With a lack of community ties. Porque no hay suficientes vínculos que lo unan a la comunidad. Uh, the defendant is a Mexican citizen, and we have we feel that if he is left out on bail, he will return to Mexico. El, de, el acusado es un ciudadano mexicano y tenemos la preocupación de que si lo dejan en libertad se devuelva, se vaya a ir a México. We also concerned about a danger to the victim. También nos preocupa que haya el peligro hacia la víctima. Uh, Ms. Aguilera is fearful not only because of this incident. La señorita Aguilera no solamente tiene miedo debido a este, a este incidente. Well, she got punched in the lip which caused swelling and bleeding. Can you repeat that for me, please? Uh, she's fearful because she was hit in the face and she had bleeding and swelling in her lips. Okay, because ella le pegaron en la cara y tenía, este, estaba sangrando y tenía los labios inflamados, hinchados. We are concerned because Miss Aguilera told us in the past there was violence, but she did not call police. Nos preocupa porque en el pasado, la señorita Aguilera nos dijo que en el pasado había, había ocurrido actos de violencia y ella nunca llamó a la policía. We are also concerned because we have an intimidating witness. También estamos preocupados porque tenemos eh, un testigo que está intimidado. Ms. Aguilera and a defendant once lived together, but they no longer do. They, they, they live together? Is that what uh, you but, said? Yeah, but they no longer do. Okay. En una época, el señor, la señorita Aguilera y el acusado vivían juntos, pero ya no viven juntos. They have one child together. Tienen un hijo en común de los dos. In a household, there are three total children. How many children? Uh, three. Three. Okay. Y en, la, en el hogar se encuentran uh, tres menores en total. In this incident. Y este incidente. Well, the defendant punched Aguilera in the face. Donde el acusado le pegó a Aguilera en la cara. He did so in front of two children. Lo hizo en frente de dos menores de edad. Kay Martinez and Jay Conella. Uh, Kate, Kelsey, Kate Martinez, and Jonas. Uh, what was the last name again? I'm sorry. Conaya. 
Canalla, and you're as Canalla. Who are both under 18. Que los dos son menores de, menores de 18 años. Because of these facts, Debido a estos hechos, these are our recommendations. Estas son las recomendaciones que estamos exponiendo. Thank you. Ms. Kim, what's your recommendation? What is your recommendation, Kim? We would like to re request for a signature bond because um, he has been here working at Limestone uh, to make the fireplaces. He does have a, a he does have a ties to the community. And he also has a six siblings and his mother living here in Georgia. So I don't think that he is a flight risk. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna pause you right there and let uh, the interpreter. Yes, thank you. Uh, estamos pidiendo que se le otorgue este, una fie uh, bajo palabra, uh, ya que usted ha estado aquí, tiene, tiene vínculos con la comunidad, está, está, ha estado trabajando, haciendo uh, chimeneas, eh, y también tiene familiares aquí, eh, tiene uh, la, su mamá y seis hermanos. Go ahead, Miss King. Yes, and he does not oppose to stay away or no further contact with Doris. However, y, y él no se opone a esto y, él, y está dispuesto a no tener contacto con Doris. Sin embargo, Miss Doris was actually gone to Decap County Jail and she came back on Tuesday. Sin This embargo, week. la señorita Doris este, estuvo en la casa en el condado de Decap y regresó de la cárcel. And Somebody really has to take care of their child who is 11 oh. months old. Y alguien tiene que cuidar a ese niño porque es un bebé de 11 meses de edad. Because Miss Doris will be going to jail, he needs to take care of the baby. Uh, porque la señorita va a ir a la señorita va a ir a la casa, entonces el señor tiene que cuidar al bebé. So, Anything else? No, Your no, Honor. No, eso es todo. Right. On the criminal trespass charge for uh, the August 2021 incident, bond is set at a thousand dollars signature bond through the jail. A surety or a signature bond, your name? It's a signature bond through the jail. Through the jail. A thousand dollars? One thousand. Ok, eh, para el caso de entrada de legal ordenamiento de morada de agosto de 2021, se Do we lose our interpreter? Madam interpreter, um, just give it a few moments. And for the second case, so she will translate this as soon as she comes back. On the battery is going to be a $3,500 surety bond. On the two counts of cruelty, it's going to be 750 each for a total of a $5,000 surety bond. Uh, no further contact with Doris Agui uh, Aguilera. She is? Oh, okay. And uh, no further contact with Ms. Doris. He has to stay away from 201 Northwood Drive the entire apartment complex, which is the Highland Circle Apartments. No illegal drugs, no weapons, and no firearms. His next court date for both cases will be March 10th. Is our interpreter back? Judge Law, uh, he said he understands what you said. Mr. Kim, are you satisfied that your client is um, able to understand his bond? Yes, because he went to, uh, he was here for like 11 years here in US, total of like 13 years. So he hears English. It's just that sometimes he gets confused a little bit. That's why he requires a um, translator, but I believe he understood. All right, uh, Officer Norris, please leave Mr. Lugo in the courtroom until the interpreter comes back. I want to make sure that there's no confusion about the bond amount. Um, next case, please. And we will call Mr. Lugo back once um, the interpreter comes back on. Have a seat, sir. Position three, Mr. I'm sorry.
This is position 10, Mr. Lay. Mr. Michael Davis. Is that no, correct? No, position 10, Mr. Lay. Oh, 10. Okay. All right. This is Mr. Daryl Lay. Oh, that's right. Um, he had to consult with Ms. McLeod. Your Honor, I haven't been able to speak with him yet. Not at all? Not at all. No. Oh, okay. Uh, do you have the jail number? It's 404 612-2392. All right, and as soon as you're done with the conversation, please come back on and we'll resume with this case. All right, we'll take yes, either one of the two gentlemen at the front row. Francois, we can take any one of the gentlemen at the front row. Mr. Lockett, um, position 11. 11, thank you. Mr. Jimmy Lockett. That's crazy. Mr. Lockett's case is 22 CR 001019C, accused of criminal trespass from February 23rd, 2022. Uh, Mr. Lockett, you've been advised of your right to remain silent and your attorney is Ms. Gant. Any priors, Mr. Um, Tucson? 66. That's good, thank you. Um, Ms. Goodry, Ms. Goodry, what is their bond recommendation? Yana, he currently has a $2,500 surety bond. We're asking that you maintain that bond, issue a stay away from 494 Ponte D. Leon Avenue, Northeast Atlanta, that's the Ameris Bank, and no alcohol, drugs, or weapons. This is as pre-trial has stated. He has over 66 arrests um, given, and he also has an open possession of Schedule II controlled substance out of Fulton County from 2020. He has arrests out of Tennessee, Florida, giving him, making him a flight risk. I, I'm, the, yeah, I'm familiar with his. Okay, and just PCS briefly, yeah. given that his criminal history dates back to 1986, he will reoffend. So that's why we're asking for the stated recommendation. All right. Ms. Gant? Thank you, Honor. Mr. Jimmy Lockett, I am requesting a signature bond on Mr. Lockett's behalf. He does not have the means to pay bond at this time. And if your Honor determines that he is ineligible, then the lowest bond possible. He is 67 years old. He has been in the Atlanta area for um, the past 15 years. We are unopposed to the stay away at 494 Ponce de Leon. Avenue. Um, he is college educated, has a degree in mathematics. Um, he has been retired for four years, Your Honor. He um, disputes the allegations. And again, I am requesting a signature bond or the lowest bond possible. And we are unopposed to the stay away. Thank you. 500 surety bond, stay away from the Ameris Bank at 499. Is it 499 or 494? 494. 494. Ponce de Leon Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. Next court date is March 10th. I'm currently moving on. Next point that um, the relationship is savage. 500, right? 500. Uh, like it. Uh, Your Honor, I'm sorry. Uh, this, no, no problem. No problem. This is the Spanish interpreter. I'm back. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I got kicked Not, out or something. No problem. Mr. Lugo, if you please come back and have a seat. Señor Lugo, por favor, póngase ahí para terminar su audiencia. Yeah. With regards to his second case on the battery domestic violence, his bond is 3,500 surety and each count of cruelty is $750 surety for a grand total of $5,000 surety. Okay, en el caso número, en el segundo caso de, la, de las lesiones, es un, una fianza eh, confiador de $3,500 dólares. Uh, Oh, we lost her again. Yeah, I've got a okay. All right, Mr. Lugo, I, um, I, I, do you understand the terms of the bond? Yes. All right. And you understand you have to stay away from Miss Doris Aguilera? Yes. And you cannot return to that apartment complex? Yes. And if you have any children with her, you need to go to Superior Court and file a legitimation action. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you. I will advise Ms. Lynn that he uh, understands the proceedings. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next case, uh, courtroom two. Mr. Bates. Position one on the add-on calendar. We have State versus Marty Lee Bates, case number 22CR 001040F. Mr. Bates is accused of simple battery and criminal trespass. Uh, with regards to this case, um, from a this was from a February twenty second, twenty twenty two incident. Um, any priors, Mr. Tucson? No, first of all. All right, Mr. Bates has been advised of his right to remain silent. His attorney is Miss Yan, and Miss Falk. What is the recommendation for both these charges? A uh, three thousand dollar total signature bond, Your Honor. Two thousand dollar signature bond on the simple battery family violence. One thousand dollar signature bond on the criminal trespass. We are also requesting a stay away from seven three six zero Dun Raven Place. That is D U N R A V E N. Sandy Springs, Georgia. Uh, we are also asking that he have no further contact with Rodney Bates. I believe that Mr. Bates has made it clear he, although they are brothers, that he does not want contact and the fact that the defendant showed up at his house, um, went into, walked into his garage and then just started shoving uh, and grabbing Mr. Rodney Bates is clear that Mr. Bates does not want contact with the defendant and that he does uh, wish to no longer have the defendant come to his residence. All right, Ms. Gant, um, if you just pardon me for a minute. Ms. Lane, Ada? Yes, Your I'm so apologize. I don't know what. No, not a problem. I've already confirmed with uh, the defendant that he understood the terms of the bond. So okay. um, we've concluded with that case. Thank you. And I apologize for this. Never. No problem. No. Never. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. All and right. your, your Honor, I did leave off. We are asking also for no alcohol, drugs, or weapons. All right. Um, Ms. Gant, uh, I don't think you're going to object to the signature bond. Any objection to the stay away and the no contact? Um, Your Honor, I object to the stay away and no contact. My client wishes to have contact. However, I was unable to um, reach Mr. Rodney Bates. So I will defer to the court's um, ruling. All right. If Mr. Rodney Bates wishes to have contact with Marty Bates, then he would need to contact the victim. Uh, Rodney would need to contact the victim advocate's office to have any modification put in place. But presently, I am going to accept the state's recommendation of a $3,000 signature bond through pretrial services. Mr. Bates will report to pretrial once a month. He will stay away. He will stay 200 yards away from 7360 Dunraven Place in Sandy Springs. And he's to have no contact with Rodney Bates, which is means say 200 yards away from Mr. Rodney, do not communicate with him in any way, form, or manner, including in person, through a phone, a computer device, or through third parties. As I said, if Mr. Rodney wishes to have contact with Marty, he would need to contact the solicitor's office and get a modification of the bond order. Do you understand, Mr. Marty Bates? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, you presently have a $3,000 signature bond through pretrial. You must report to pretrial once a month. If you violate any of the conditions of the bond, uh, your signature bond will be converted to a cash or surety bond, and you would have to be brought back to jail. Understood. All right. Please make sure your address is current with us at all times, and we will send you a notice of your next court date. And Your Honor, I may not have heard it, but did you also order no alcohol, drugs, or weapons? Uh, no illegal drugs, no weapons, and no firearms. Uh, 2000 for simple battery, 1000 for the trespass. Thank you, Mr. Bates. Come on, Mr. Brown. Next is position two. He's the add on. Yeah. All right, thank you. We have Mr. Shane Brown, case number 20 CR 005203E. Mr. Brown, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney and representing you is Ms. Wanda Gant. Okay, um, Ms. Folk, um, the case was brought in back in 2018, 2019. It took a trip up to district attorney's office. It came back to us. 
And what um, what would you like to do in terms of bond? Um, Your Honor, there is actually already a five thousand dollars surety bond on his uh, charge of terroristic threats and acts that was given to him by the um, judge up in Superior Court. What occurred in this case, Your Honor, and I am intimately familiar with this because I handled this case both as a DA, ADA, and as a solicitor. Um, the defendant actually, the case was, the judge heard on the $5,000 on the terroristic threats, but then refused to hear the bond on the simple assault because it wasn't added to the order for transfer to Superior Court. So the case just kind of held out in limbo we, I got in contact with the DA's office to have them fix the order. And in trying to fix the order, they accidentally transferred it back to us. So for the last about five months, we've been trying to get it transferred back to Superior Court. I have kept in contact with the Superior Court. The DA's office wants this case as a felony. However, they just, for whatever reason, the Superior Court clerk is not reattaching the case and reopening it up as a felony. And so what's happening is it's just in limbo right now. And as it is been transferred to state court in order to just resolve the remaining charge of simple assault, we are asking for a $1,000 surety bond as to the simple assault and for us not to address the terroristic threats as it has always already been addressed. And anything at this point would be essentially a bond modification request. All right. Ms. Gant, do you have any takes on this case? Um, Your Honor, I um, am requesting a signature bond in this case. We've heard the convoluted um, procedural history. Um, therefore, um, Mr. Brown has been incarcerated for 11 months. He doesn't have the means to even pay the $5,000 bond that was set. So um, um, for these reasons, Your Honor, I am requesting a signature bond. He is 27 years old. He has been at, in Atlanta for his entire life. He has family here. He obtained a GED. Um, he is, again, unemployed um, due to his prolonged incarceration. And that's basically my argument. Thank you. Who are the alleged victims in this case? Your Honor, the alleged victims in this case, there are actually, the main victim in this case is Joyana Chester. That is J-O-Y-A-U-N-A, -A, Chester, common spelling. And then her friend also overheard the threat, Naya Duckett. That is N-A-I-Y-A. And then the last name is D-U-C-E-T-T. -T. And the threat, um, the reason why the state is so adamant about and the DA's office is adamant about keeping this case is the defendant threatened to shoot up her house and to shoot her also. And when officers pulled over the defendant, they actually found a gun in his trunk. Um, additionally, an Uber driver also heard the threat. And contrary to what has been said, I understand that the defendant has been in custody for over 300 days. The majority of that time, Your Honor, he is actually addressing his two felony cases in DeKalb County, where he was transferred over to DeKalb County Superior Court, handled those cases in August of 2000. 21 pled to time served and pled to misdemeanors on a felony terroristic threats and a felony criminal damage to property in the second degree. So just to be clear, and the reason he was arrested is because he missed a 222, I believe, 21 court date here for his misdemeanor terroristic threats. So just to be clear, he has not just been sitting here because of this misunderstanding. He had other business and other courts to address prior to coming back. Bond remains as the same. Uh, the victim shall be contacted to appear via Zoom at the March 10th SAP calendar, and we will address bond. What is the bond? The current bond amounts of, I believe you said uh, 4,000 and 1,000, 5,000 total? No, there was 5,000 on the terroristic threats and acts. The simple assault has never been given a bond. So that is simple what we're assault to is do. presently $1,000 signature bond through the jail. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. And uh, the terroristic threat, that stays the same, 5,000? 5,000, good bond. Until the victims are contacted, then we will have a bond hearing on March 10th. This is notice to the state that a bond modification hearing will be held on March 10th. Thank you. Uh, whatever conditions were set by the Superior Court from the $5,000 bond, I'm sure there was no contact with Chester and Duffet. No weapons. Your Honor, just to be on the safe side, can we reissue those conditions on this bond? I cannot, because this case keeps locking up in Odyssey, I can't see the bond conditions from this okay. superior. Your Honor, 
and we are unopposed to um, the conditions set. All right, thank you. So um, on the terroristic threats is $5,000 good bond, simple assaults, $1,000 signature bond through the jail, no contact with Joanne Chester and Nayia Duckett, stay away from the incident location, no illegal drugs and no weapons and no firearms. Reset date, March 10th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. We will see you on March 10th. This is position 10, Mr. Lay. All right. Oh, Ms. Lay. All right. This is round three. Ms. McLeod, we ready? Yes, Your Honor. All right, good. Um, Mr. Darrell Lay has um, been accused of simple battery and obstruction of a law enforcement officer. And Mr. Tucson, any priors on Mr. Darrell Lay? Yeah, 35 total. Last arrest was back in August. Possession of a Schedule One controlled substance on probation. Ag assault with an object. 19 SC 167441. He got a lot of violence. All right. That was the. Uh, what was this last conviction other than the 19 SC case? Hold on, real quick. He got a battery family violence conviction from 2020. It was ag assault reduced to battery family violence. I got a 2019 ag assault strangulation, ag assault cruelty in the third. The ag assault and cruelty was a conviction. Mm -hmm. That's good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Segura, what's your recommendation for um, this case? Simple battery and obstruction. Uh, we are recommending a $5,000 cash bond no alcohol, drugs, and weapons, a one-day anger awareness, absolutely no further contact with Kendall Hughes, spelled K-Y-N-D-L-B-H-U-G-H-E-S, and a stairway from the apartment and Tyler Adams House Apartments, located at 2280 Camperton Road. And we base our recommendations not only the facts of this case, but because the defendant has a huge violent history with the same victim on multiple occasions. On case 19 SC 167441, which was the aggravated assault against the same victim, Kendall Hughes, he pled and had a stay away order, which was part of probation for five years, which is still going. And not only that, he also has another family violence battery charge with the same victim on 21 SC 178536. And the defendant also has a no pro for aggravated assault on 21 SC 178535. And because of these facts, these are our recommendations. All right. Thank you. Ms. McLeod? Yes, Your Honor. The purpose of bond is not supposed to be punitive. My client and the, uh, the young lady in question, he tells me they were formerly in a relationship, but they have not been a in a relationship for more than a year now. They just happened to have mutual friends and he was visiting with some friends and they were talking to each other. And, you know, she wanted to go into an argument about their former relationship and it escalated. He tells me that, it was just a verbal argument. It was, there was nothing physical. And I looked at the police report and it did not indicate that he had in fact, I believe it said that um, he pushed her, but her statement was that it was a verbal argument. That is what I read in the police report, Your Honor. My client is not in a position to pay a, to pay a bond at all. This is what he tells me. He lives in Riverdale, which is some way away from where the, the victim lives. He lives there with his sister. He had a job he was working, but of course he was supposed to have gone to work today and was unable to do so because he's in jail. I also want to let the court know something that he has shared with me, that he has an appointment for tomorrow to be interviewed for disability because he has a gunshot wound. He has, um, he has rods in his leg. Um, he, one of his um, arms is injured and um, 
essentially he is disabled and he has applied for disability and has an interview scheduled for tomorrow, Your Honor. So on compassionate grounds alone, I would ask the court to consider giving him a signature bond. And if the court is disinclined to do so, at least have as low as possible shorty bond that he can post through a bonding company. On the simple battery is 1500, the obstruction is 500, total bond is at 2000, it is a surety bond. No contact with Kendall Hughes to stay away from 2280 Campbellton Road, at least 200 yards away, so he cannot be anywhere near that location. No illegal drugs, no weapons, and no firearms. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Reset date is March 10. Thank you, Anna. Good luck. All right, come on, Mr. Davis. Oh, sorry, uh, 1500 and 500. Okay. Yes, sir, may I have your name, please? This is position three, okay. uh, Mr. Davis. Thank you. I have Mr. Michael Davis accused of simple battery from a April 18, 2020 incident. Uh, 22 CR 001028J. Uh, Mr. Davis was originally charged with two counts of simple assault. I believe one of the counts has been NOD, correct, Ms. Goodman? That's, that's correct, Your Honor. All right. So that leaves us with one remaining warrant in which the charge has been amended from simple assault to simple battery. Mr. Davis, your attorney is Ms. McLeod. And yes, um, any priors, Mr. Tucson? Yeah, um, I was reading something. I got a 2016 arrest out of Alabama for obstruction, giving false information. 2015 family offense, domestic violence, third degree. 2013 family offense, DV, third degree, a probation violation. 2012 harassment communication, family offense, domestic violence, third degree. Uh, failed, failed to signal, no driver's license. 2012 harassing communication, 2011 harassing communications. That's out of oh, order. That's, that's good. That's, thank you. Um, Ms. Goodry, uh, have you been in touch with Ms. Tara Greer? Your Honor, we had no contact information for Ms. Tara. Okay. Um, so is this Meadow Park Drive still a valid address? As far as I know, we're still going to ask for a stay away, given that we do we did not have any contact information, so we don't know whether or not that address is valid. All right. And what else are y'all seeking? We're seeking a fifteen hundred dollars surety, no further contact with Tara, a stay away from the incident location, one day anger awareness, and no alcohol, drugs, or weapons. This is due to, as Preacher stated, his criminal history being very extensive, making him a flight risk and a risk of reoffense, um, and due to him pushing the victim. However, we do not know the relationship between the parties as stated because we had no contact information. So that's why we're asking for the no further contact and the stay away. All right, thank you. Ms. McLeod, I'm going to impose a $2,000 signature bond through pretrial services. Uh, no further contact with Tara Greer. He may return to 2374 Meadow Park Drive as long as she doesn't reside there. So on his first visit, he has to go with an officer and if he lives there and if she if she doesn't live there, he can go back to that location. No illegal drugs, no weapons, and no firearms. Thank um, you, Anna. My understanding is that there is no, no relationship between them in, and never was in terms of a sexual relationship or anything like that. They happen to have mutual friends. And well, I believe the prosecutor was unable to contact her because she's in jail. Oh, okay. Well. Either event, if he sees her, he has to stay 200 yards away from her and do not communicate with her in any way, form, or manner, even through mutual friends. All right, Thank Mr. You. Davis, uh, make sure we have a good address on you because we'll send you notice of when to come back to court. What's the Thank bond? You, you do. 20,000 signature bond through pretrial. Don't forget to report to pretrial once a month. Is it 20? Yeah, no, are you ordering one day? 2,000. Did I say 20? Yes, she did. That's why I asked. And that's per judge, per judge. Per judge, yeah. Your Honor, are you ordering one day anger awareness? Mm, no, not for I this don't... one. Not for this one. 
I, the the, the um, uncertainty of the relationship gives me pause. I can order anger awareness if it was a DV case. Okay. All right. All right, folks, uh, unless we have any other cases left in courtroom two, Officer Norris, Officer Francois, we good? Yes, we're good. We're complete. All right, thank you. Uh, councils, we are just going to go down the calendar. Position you, one, uh, Brenna uh, Benton. Reset for the uh, if I may, Your Honor. She got released on bond. Yes. yes. Okay. So further notice for trial. Position two was a 2,500 surety bond reset to March 10th. Position three is a $2,000 signature bond through pretrial. Position four is a $1,000 uh, surety bond. Uh, reset date is March 10th. Uh, position five is a uh, 15, excuse $2, me, $2,000 signature, signature bond through the jail and uh, stay away from the other co-defendants. Uh, position six is a, and Ms. McLeod? Yes, Your Honor. This is the Lawrence. Do you think you are his attorney? DuBose, Lawrence DuBose, uh, Your Honor, but it, you know, it seemed that as um, I believe oh, the prosecutor said, there was a mix up in the typing because as I was saying earlier, it seemed like he was a co-defendant to Travis Williams, and that matter was dealt with. Okay, but that is another. that is your that is your case, Ms. McLeod. They they sent a correction, and it should have been four. I think Ms. Gant, you did a correction on that. Yes. And uh, hopefully, Mr. Jordan or Ms. Cook forward that information to you, so you are the conflict attorney on that record. Uh, that was the one they just sent the correct information with the correct information on it now. Thank you. Whether you like it or not, Ms. McLeod, that's your case now. He's got a $2,000 signature bond. Hopefully he'll be in touch with you. And he can't shop at the Lennox Mall. So he has to stay away from that. And they gave me the location. address of all of them got the same address. Just... Well, hopefully one of them will tell the others. Okay. Darius Dixon, position six has a 2,500 signature bond through pretrial. And um, that's a family violence case and he has anger awareness class. Position seven, Julius DeBose has a $2,000 surety bond, reset date March 10th. Uh, Amelia Folks is a $1,000 signature bond through the jail, pending admission to the pre-trial diversion program. It, it's 3000 or 1000 Did I change it to 3000 Oh, it's 3000 Excuse me. 3000 signature bond through the jail. Position nine, Jackson is a 2500 surety bond. Reset date is March 10. Position 10, Daryl Lay is a $2,000 surety bond. Reset date, March 10. Position 11 is a $500 surety bond. Uh, reset date, March 10. Position 12 and 13. Position 12 is a $1,000 signature bond through the jail. Position 13 is a $5,000 surety bond. Reset date is March 10 for both cases. Position 14 is a $1,500 surety bond. Reset date, March 10. Position 15 is a uh, $2,000 signature bond through the jail. Um, and then position 16, that's Mr. Murphy's case. Mm -hmm. Position 16, Jennifer Thompson is a $5,000 signature bond through pretrial. Reset date, uh, further notice for trial. Position 17 is a $2,500 split bond, 2,000 cash, 500 surety. Reset date is March 10th. Position 18 is a $3,000 surety bond, reset date March 10th. Position 19 is a... Um, uh, reset to tomorrow. Oh, sorry, that's been reset um, to tomorrow. Mm -hmm. This is a medical reset. Position 20 is a um, $2,000 signature bond through the jail. And that's further notice and that's represented by Ms. Kim. Ms. Kim. Okay, add-on cases, Marty Bates is a $3,000 surety bond and um, signature bond through pretrial, excuse me. And position two, Shane Brown is reset to March 10th. His terrorist threats charge remains at 5,000 and will issue the bond. And simple assaults, a $1,000 signature bond through the, through the jail. This case is uh, being reset for a bond modification hearing and pending a possible re-transfer back to the district attorney's office. That concludes the calendars. Any questions, folks? Corrections? Yes. Uh, 
Gidry and Gant. Uh, it's Ponce de Leon. We don't pronounce it fancy in this town, just so y'all know. <laughs> I don't, know why, I don't know why Toussaint thought to ruin it for the rest of us. I was quite enjoying the pronunciation of Ponce de Leon. I mean, they can. I'm just saying. Well, I'm we glad I wasn't it. Even <laughs> and the thing is, it looks Cajun, so you think I would be able to see it better, right? Hey. No, he's not Cajun. He came all the way from Spain and made his way to Augustus, Florida. Uh, St. Augustine, Saint Florida, Augustine. <laughs> where he discovered the fountain of youth. Oh. Fortunately, he died from a septic injury, and I find that all out because I have to take my kids there for a historical tour. So, <laughs> but that was in South Carolina, right? No, Florida, St. Florida. Augustine, Florida, oh. where everyone has dinner at five o'clock in the evening. <laughs> so everyone Learned other that. than, yep, yeah, other than that, you all have a great Thursday. Uh, for those of you joining us on our Orca calendar tomorrow. Make sure you have a good breakfast. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Everyone. Bye. Bye. You too.